All right, so episode four of the Apple TV Plus original espionage series, Slow Horses, has arrived. So let's dive into it. Now this will have some slight spoilers from previous episodes, but I won't include any spoilers for this current episode until the very end, and then I'll give you plenty of warning in case you want to bail before hearing them. So at the end of episode three, Curly had beheaded one of the other kidnappers, who we now know was an undercover MI5 agent. And then Moody, an agent assigned to Slough House, but also working for Taverner, accidentally shot Sid in the head. And then as he goes to clean up some evidence inside Slough House, he tussles with Louisa and Min and falls down the stairs, breaking his neck. This leads to a very tense and entertaining conversation between Lam and Taverner, which then ends with Lam heading over to the kidnapper's location to alert the undercover agent and have the dogs come and rescue Hassan. But when Lam arrives, Hassan and the kidnappers are gone, save for Mo, who's been beheaded by Curly. Which then brings us to the current episode, and I gotta say, I was fairly disappointed with it. Not much actually happens in this one, making it feel way more like filler. There is some excitement and urgency that builds for the slow horses, but at the end, nothing has really been accomplished. We do learn a bit more about Taverner, or in at least what she's willing to do as her role as second desk. Now, there's definitely scheming that's going on, and I like the treachery that is being displayed across the story. I'm still loving how tiny bits and pieces of Standish's story are being unveiled. There's a ton of mystery surrounding her husband and how Lamb fits into all of it. And in this episode, some brief lines of dialogue continue that intrigue. I'm hoping though that all the teasing will come to some sort of reveal before the season is over because it would be terribly frustrating to continue to tease this out with zero payoff, even if it's just a little bit of actual truth. Now, some characters make stupid decisions, leading to actions that are tense, but ultimately unnecessary. And we get to watch some conversations play out amongst the kidnappers, which reveal a little more of the plot, but they ultimately don't contribute massively to the story that we watch play out in this episode. This was 44 minutes of watching characters do some rote actions that may or may not lead anywhere in the next episode. I mean, not everything in this, though, was a waste. There are portions of conversations that are compelling, and they raise more intrigue. But I also think they could have been incorporated into other sequences, which then would make this episode feel more worthwhile. The scenes are tense, and the action is exciting, so that consistency throughout the show is very much appreciated. But in a week-to-week -week show, especially for this episode, when it ended, I was really wanting more. So overall for this episode, I'd almost skip a week of watching and then binge episodes four and five together. Now I've not watched episode five, but I'm hoping that it will contain more actual storytelling and content that pushes the narrative forward. The acting continues to be excellent and I love all of the cloak and dagger mixed with situations and characters that are questionable at best. The mystery and drive of the show is exciting, as is the urgency that's inherent to the story. But within this episode, not much has actually occurred, making the elements of this episode just feel like filler. There's no sex or nudity, but there is a ton of profanity and not really any violence. I give episode four of Slow Horses three out of five couches. Okay, so now I'm gonna dive into a small spoiler discussion of episode four. So if you don't wanna hear any of them, now's your chance to bail. Thanks so much for watching and for couching with me. Uh, okay, so where to begin? Let's start with the conversation that takes place with the kidnappers. Even though it's spread out across the episode, the gist is that two of the kidnappers are completely in shock that Mo Curly beheaded Mo. And after some discussion, we learn that Curly has basically gone rogue and he's intent on killing Hassan. Now, I'm a little shocked that the other two kidnappers believe that Curly will drive them towards the forest on their way to the getaway boat and then just tie up Hassan to be found by people later in the day. They've already been shown how unhinged Curly is and how because he is acting rogue, he can't be trusted, and yet they're willing to buy his words. I'm not sure if that's poor writing or just speaking to the ineptitude of the other two characters, I and mean, we're just gonna have to wait and see. But you can see it in Curly's eyes that things are about to get more violent. And my guess is that if he does actually stop the van in the forest, Hassan isn't gonna be the only one that is intended to be killed. All right, so now for Taverner. While I was a little shocked by how she lied about Lamb and Slough House, I really shouldn't be. I mean, she's absolutely laying the groundwork that the slow horses screwed up the operation and got Mo killed. The fact that she outright lied to first desk has put an immense target on the team's back, and it's gonna be curious to see how they're able to redirect to show the actual truth. Now, my guess is that somewhere, Lamb has intel that's gonna incriminate Taverner and her knowledge of the operation. And not just her knowledge, but that the entire thing was set up by her. I thought it was really sneaky and devious of her to bring in Struan and basically blackmail him into incriminating Lamb by saying how he and Mo had been meeting in private to create this kidnapping plan. And it's sad that she targets the weakest and most fragile member of Slough House because Struan is just so meek and afraid that he'll agree to basically anything just to save face with his family. 
All right, so were you just as frustrated as I was with Cartwright? Why the heck did he need to go back to the hospital to check on Sid? I mean, it only left an hour or two before that. And I get that he cares for her, but knowing that the dogs are on his trail, it's a really stupid move for him to go to such a public place, and then one that has so many cameras all about. And I know this is the action setup to create a chase and excitement within the episode, but it was just so obvious of what would happen the moment that he stepped out of the car at the hospital. Now, I love the sequence with Standish as she and Lam are taken into custody by Spider and Duffy. Every time we see Standish, it seems we've learned a tiny bit more about her, but in mysterious ways. I mean, she's obviously an agent because she's relegated to Slough House, but was she a field op or just an office worker? I mean, the fact that she knows her way around a gun, I think is rather interesting, and it makes me assume that she has some field experience. I just want to know more about her story, and I love that hers is the one that we continually are learning about in very small ways. So for all that happened in this episode, not really that much actually happened. The conversations are telling, but as I've said before, the episode as a whole feels like it was more filler than anything. So where do you think the show is heading? Are you enjoying it so far? I mean, I'm liking it, but I want more progress. So here's hoping episode five delivers so much more than this one did. If you enjoyed this, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.